do in that period of time, the quicker we can start reopening. Right. And that's exactly what we've done, and, and Oklahomans are, are, are being safe, and we can see it in our numbers, uh, but we're ready to uh, get things back to normal, get life back to normal. So, uh, again, we can't wait to have you uh, in Oklahoma on Saturday. Great job, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jovita, please. And also to be, oh, thank you. And also to be able to visit um, many businesses throughout the states. I travel to North Carolina as well as Dallas and visit with the faith base and uh, the lending community as well as some small businesses to, to f feel and see and uh, as evidence of how PPP is actually working, not only in the faith base, not only in the small businesses, but also the lending community. What more can we do to facilitate more capital for the small businesses? The underserved uh, communities are also being sought after. We've asked the lenders, the very diverse lenders that we've signed up, over 5,400 of them, to provide outreach, very aggressive outreach to our um, inner cities and underserved communities. I've spoken with some of the governors, I've spoken with the mayors as well, that we need to do more. There's over $100 billion available uh, remaining in the PPP program, a very successful program. You've shared, Lori, the, the, how you've been able to transition your business from a very high end to a takeout and still maintain the, the customer base. And we're realizing this, uh, Mr. President, throughout uh, the states and every state that we visit. Now, the fact that um, SBA has been able to have a touch point of over 10 million small businesses, we have 50 million that you indicated of employees in one right. portfolio, and another about uh, 9 million um, in the other portfolio. So at, at some point, we will be providing technical assistance, providing some coaching and um, counseling to be able to solidify those relationships that the new businesses have developed with the lending community. So I thank you, President, for and your thank you all very support. much. And you know, they've done like more business in four days than they did in four years. <laughs> yes. It's a big, it's become a big business. Small business is now big business. So thank you. Thank you. Doing a great job. Thank you very much. Steve, please. Mr. President, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And it's great to see your economic programs working, especially for small businesses. The PPP has been a tremendous success. We've seen that in the employment numbers. We still have more work to do. We want to make sure that every single person who lost their job because of COVID gets back to work, and we won't be done until that happens. And I'm also pleased that this week, working with the Federal Reserve, we've opened the Main Street funding facility. Again, that will be accessible to small businesses down to $250,000 loans. So again, a, a massive amount of liquidity that's been pumped into the system for small businesses. Thank you, Larry. How are we doing today? Well, un weekly unemployment claims fell for the 11th straight week. It's a good sign. We're going to have job numbers in June, and I think will be very strong. Uh, I agree with Stephen. I think the rescue plan worked. Uh, I think the PPP was superhuman. Probably saved 55 million jobs, and we saw that with a $3 million, uh, three million job increase in the May numbers. I compile my list of green shoots, sir. We've got <clears throat> uh, Apple Mobility for traveling, almost back to its pandemic, pre-pandemic high. Uh, home builder demand and confidence is very, very strong. Uh, automobiles, car sales are moving from 8.6 million to 12.2 million as the factories uh, reopen. As you noted, the retail sales number was a spectacular uh, 18%. Michigan consumer expectations, very strong today. NFIB optimism index, expect economy to improve, a record jump. Expect economy to improve, a record jump. And manufacturing, the Philly Fed and the New York Fed, uh, future activity indexes are off the charts. If I play reference to the Congressional Budget Office, if we get a 20% increase in Q3, which I think is quite possible, a 20% increase in Q4, and a 5% increase in Q1 2021, we will be back to where we were in 2019. We will have made up for the lost ground. Yeah, amazing. It's not going to take That's five amazing. years. We will have made it up with some decent numbers by the first quarter of 2021. That's called the Super V, right? 
Super V. I like the eyes. It, it's called the V. It's called the V plus. <laughs> well, that's where we're headed. But we were headed to great things, and then we uh, got hit by the Chinese plague. So you know that happens too, and uh, things happen that you don't expect sometimes. So, but we're, we built it once. We're now building it again, and it's going to be uh, even more successful, in my opinion. Kaylee, please. Yes, Mr. President. Um, I would just note that the V is indeed an I, and you've described this economy like a rocket ship previously. And I think the numbers you laid out are worth reemphasizing because it's exactly that. 2.5 million jobs added, blowing past expe expectations. You had the experts off by about 10 million jobs. That's quite an extraordinary number to be off by. Um, also, the Dow above 26,000 points. You mentioned the NASDAQ setting the record. Um, 7 million jobs, 9,000 opportunity zones. You're the jobs president. You did this once. You brought 7 million jobs. And quite clearly what the markets are saying is they have faith that you are the jobs president that will do this again. So most people have never built a positive economy. We're going to do it twice. And the second time is going to be better than the first, I think, Steve. We have a shot at it, right? OK, uh, please. Go ahead. Yes, I'm Anthony Goins, and I'm honored to be here, Mr. President, representing the state of Nebraska. We uh, were really focused on three things in terms of making sure that our economy stayed on track. And first, it was stabilization. So the PPP, the idle loan, gave us the liquidity injection that we needed to help us out. Debt servicing, our community banks work very closely with the small businesses to defer payments. Uh, and then we move into uh, recovery. And when we talk about recovery, uh, the $1.08 billion that we've received from the Treasury has been a huge help. We've broken it down into four programs, small business stabilization, uh, rural broadband. Uh, we're giving a million dollars for Gallup. And then we're also looking at taking uh, uh, workers that are in industries that are shrinking and retraining them in high demand industries so we can put Nebraskans back to work in the right areas. You mentioned rural broadband, and we're doing that very big for the Middle West and uh, for our farmers, and that's a very big factor. And as you know, we've started the process already. Yes. And I think you're going to be very happy with that. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank, Thank you, you very sir. much. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Please. Good afternoon, Mr. President, governors, secretaries, directors, and honored guests. My name is Melissa Hegarty. And I'm proud and honored to be the invited guest of Governor Ricketts from the great state of Nebraska. I am a wife and mother to two young daughters ages 9 and 11, as well as the co-owner of four bakeries in Nebraska and Iowa. We've been in business for 10 years and have approximately 92 employees. Early on in COVID-19, we decided not to lay off any employees, rather ask the ones that live at home with their parents to scale back on some of their hours if they can. By doing that, it would give the other employees that needed their shifts to be able to cover their rent and other expenses an opportunity to keep their hours. Most of our employees are in their early 20s with no families to fall back on, so it was critical for us to take care of them any way we could. It was an important decision for the federal government to allow each state's governor to decide how to formulate their own plan of how to close and in turn reopen their state. Fortunately, my businesses in both Nebraska and Iowa were able to continue to serve our guests inside the bakery while practicing social distancing, sanitizing between guests, all while everyone wears a mask. We had several terrible weeks of sales leading into Easter. It was easily the scariest time of my life as a business owner, not knowing what would happen next. We did apply for and receive Paycheck Protection Program funds through our small locally owned bank who we've had a strong relationship with since we started back in 2010. That program has been helpful for us to continue to meet our fiduciary obligations in terms of promises to our staff as well as paying our monthly bills. As the virus continued past Easter, we were able to increase our delivery business while adding a new service for our guests, curbside pickup. But with curbside pickup, it did come with some challenges. So increased labor would be probably the biggest effect on our bottom line. Additional employees have been added to answer the phones and runners are needed to take orders out to the guests waiting in their car. By mid-May, sales were picking up and we did have our best Mother's Day ever seeing double digit growth over last year's weekly sales. So my Nebraska bakeries have now entered phase three starting this upcoming Monday of Governor Ricketts directed health measures we anticipate our guests' desire to celebrate all of the life's events they missed over the past three months. 
new babies, birthdays, anniversaries, retirements, with our ultimate hope that it will transfer into a much busier summer than we normally would have. I want to thank you for inviting me to be a part of this important discussion. Thank you very much. Great job. Thank you very much. Thanks. Please. Thank you, Mr. President. I am honored. Thank you. I'll start over. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm honored to be here representing small independent restaurant industry and the great state of Oklahoma. Thank you for inviting me. I am a small independent restaurant owner. I own and operate Stella Modern Italian Cuisine in Oklahoma City. My restaurant celebrated 10 years in business in April. Prior to COVID-19, I employed 30 people in the restaurant. When restaurants were closed for inside dining, I was forced to furlough some very dedicated and loyal employees for the first time ever. Since I did receive the PPP financial assistance, I was able to offer all of our staff their jobs back and all but three returned. I want to thank you and Governor Stitt for working so hard for our economy and helping us reopen in a responsible and systematic way. Our industry worked very closely with Governor Stitt and the Health Department of Oklahoma on guidelines to reopen with a phased approach. It has been good to get back to work and to be able to serve our guests. Under the guidelines we adopted in Oklahoma, we are using data-driven points to ensure um, we are reopening our restaurants and economy in a safe and an efficient manner. In reopening, our number one um, goal has been to keep our customers safe as well as our employees. We know there is work to be done to create a sense of confidence in our diners as well as our employees and help people feel good about dining out again. We are dil diligently following all the guidelines um, on using PPP for, or I'm sorry, PPE for our employees, doubling our sanitation practice, and encouraging our customers to follow the suggested guidelines for social distancing. Restaurants have always had outstanding protocol in place for safely preparing food and serving our customers in a safe manner. As you're aware, the restaurant industry has suffered greatly during this unprecedented uh, time. Our job loss and lost sales has been overwhelming. So I want to thank you for working so hard for our economy and signing into a law, the CARES Act, which provides PPP for giveable loans to help our industry and our economy at large get back to work. There is more that needs to be done, and we appreciate the opportunity we have to work closely with you, your administration, and our congressional leaders for next steps to get our economy and our industry back to work and fully open. President Trump, America's restaurant industry is grateful for your leadership in guiding us through this pandemic. Thank you again for inviting me to meet with you and thank you for Governor Stitt for your leadership in getting Oklahomans back to work. That's very nice. And we're going to try and get deductions back for your restaurant industry. And uh, you can look at that man right over there. He'll be carrying the message. But we're looking for the deductions for entertainment restaurants. And I'll get it. You'll get it right back bigger than before. OK? Thank you. Working very hard on that. Please. Thank you, Mr. President. Honored to represent the lot lodging industry before America's first hotelier president. Grateful to Governor Stitt for his leadership and for the invitation to join today. My name is Pete Patel, first generation American. My family and I immigrated to the United States in 1979 in search of the American dream. We found that American dream in Tulsa, Oklahoma as small hotelier, small business and hoteliers. Our company owns and operates 12 hotels in eastern Oklahoma. The current crisis, lodging was the first to suffer because of shelter in place. And we will be the last to recover. It may take up to two years. Before COVID, our industry had record occupancies, profitability, and new development hotels, thanks to the exceptional strong economy under your leadership, Mr. President. 
Because of COVID, occupancy dropped to 20% nationally, revenues fell by 50%, and 70% of all hotel employees were either laid off or furloughed. For the first time in my career, we were forced to lay off employees, and that was the most gut-wrenching experience that we've had. The payroll protection program was a lifeline to our industry to help America's small businesses and our employees. The best thing for our business is that our economy opens. Grateful to Oklahoma governor for his systematic, data-driven approach to leading our state back to opening. Currently, our occupancies have picked up a bit, but we still have a long ways to go as an industry as well as our market. The hospitality industry as a whole, um, as stated, are reopening hotels in a safe and healthy manner. The industry has implemented what's called uh, safe stay standards, sanitization, PPE use, social distancing, things like limiting buffets uh, and using grab and go prepackaged items. Swimming pools and gyms uh, are limited with appointments for use. Guests and employees are only safe as, as how we make the properties and we have done, the hotel industry has done a great job in adapting ways to make sure all of our employees as guests are safe. Uh, Mr. President, I would like to uh, mention a couple of things. We need more states to reopen, consumers to feel safe to travel. Industry will need additional resources to help pay our bills. Um, increase cap on uh, the idle program would be very helpful to us. Um, and we need pressure relief from our local banks who may be stressed in these times coming up that have hospitality loans. We will need help from the Federal Reserve and FDIC on those two things. In conclusion, Mr. President, America's hoteliers are grateful for your leadership. Appreciate, we appreciate and you know what it's like to own and operate hotels. We are looking forward to working with you towards a swift and strong recovery. Thank you. I'm impressed by your 20 percent number. If that was your low point, you're better than any hotel company that I've seen. <laughs> we had Hilton and they were at 1 percent, right? And we had we had all of the big ones, and they were at from 1 to 4 or 5 percent. So if you're at 20 percent, congratulations. That's pretty good. That was the average, Mr. Pres uh, Mr. President. There was a few <laughs> of them that weren't that. Huh? I can imagine. That's great. Great job. Thank you. Mr. President, thank you. As your domestic policy chief, what an honor it is to have all of these small business owners here at the White House. I'm reminded that just yesterday, Mr. President, we had veterans in. The day before, we were doing policing reform in the Rose Garden. The day before that, we were talking about seniors and taking care of our elderly and fraud. Everything you do every day, every minute is how to do the most for all Americans. And the small business, this is the backbone of our country. I'm from a town of 1,200 people, Glen Rose, Texas, an hour south of Dallas, raised by a single mom who had a flower shop on the main street of Glen Rose. Small business truly is the American dream at its very, very best. And the work that Secretary Mnuchin, that Administrator Carranza are doing for this country is extraordinary, but it's executing your vision. And so bringing today these small business owners to the White House, talking about how we're going to not just get this country back where we were just a couple months ago before the pandemic from China hit, but to even greater heights than ever before. It's just an honor to be here, and I want to welcome and thank everyone for coming to the White House, and thank you, Mr. President, for your leadership. Thank you for doing a great job. Doing thank great. you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you all very much. Mr. Mr. President, much. On Mr. President, you, the White House had this book for six Let's go, months. Press. We're going Why did you guys not going. try to block this Let's sooner? Go, press. Why Come do you on, keep hiring people that you Let's believe go. are wackos and liars? Happy, let's go, please.